Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, aka G Lauren33. I am back here today with another episode of the Legit Shoot Podcast, here with your SmackDown Live review and results for December 11, 2020. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on the podcast. Man, oh man, SmackDown continues to prove why it is centuries better than Monday Night Raw. Like I said, I know they have different writers on that show, but still, it's still Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon running it, I believe. But for some reason, SmackDown just feels so much better than Raw. I'm not saying SmackDown's a perfect show. It's not. But with Roman Reigns and Sasha Banks running the two, you know, the two divisions, it just... It just feels good. Roman is on his A game right now with this heel run. Sasha's doing a great job as the top babyface. She's making a feud with Carmella actually feel interesting, right? I know many people, many people, when Carmella first came back, I was one of them, you know? A lot of us were not that excited for the Carmella-Sasha feud. It's more of a filler feud, right? We know that the next big Sasha feud is probably not even going to be till WrestleMania when we most likely get Sasha and Bianca Belair. But with every single week, you know, Sasha's finding new ways to bring us further into this story. And that's one of the things she's so good at. You know, it's one of the many reasons why I call her the best wrestler in the world. Because not only is she great in the ring, right? In only 10 minutes, in only 10 minutes... You know, uh, we got the Sasha versus Carmella match last night, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But in only 10 minutes that that match was, and the match had, a you know, a commercial break because it was the main event and it's on TV. In 10 minutes, though, Sasha was able to bring Carmella to one of her best matches on in her, in her entire main roster career. Was it the best? I don't know. It was only 10 minutes, but it just shows how great Sasha is. Plus, she's bringing you into the story, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Not, a lot of us were not excited uh, for the Carmelo feud, but with what they're doing right now, especially what they did last night, even though I have some problems with it, but they're doing a great job of making you hate Carmelo and want to see Sasha win. You know, Carmelo's doing an excellent job of playing her heel role. Sasha's doing a great job as the sympathetic baby face, right? But while still maintaining that badass attitude, and, it, you know, I'm not going to say it gets me excited for TLC, but it kind of does. It kind of does. You know, I saw a lot of people on Twitter that, are, you know, a lot of people are now invested into the feud because of what they did last night. And that's all you can ask for. You don't want a feud that no one gives a crap about, even if it's Sasha Biggs, right? But they are actually making you care about this feud a little bit, even though everyone expects Sasha to retain the title. No one sees Carmella winning it, and that would be a cardinal sin, but, you know, still, even though we know Sasha is going to retain the title, you know, still, the fact that they're giving you a fun little story to enjoy while we get to the title defense at TLC, you know, that's all I asked for. You can say the same thing about Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. They're another great pro, uh, program that's going on on SmackDown right now. Everybody uh, knows that Roman Reigns is not losing that Universal Championship anytime soon. He's going to defend it all the way to WrestleMania. That's when he'll most likely drop it to either. We don't know who it is right now. There, There's rumors saying it's going to be Big E. There's rumors saying it could be uh, Drew McIntyre. <laughs> there's rumors saying it's going to be Goldberg, which would be absolutely terrible. Right? I know Goldberg was talking crap about Roman on the bump earlier this week. Uh, they also have the Daniel Bryan rumors still out there. Right? But even though we know Roman's not losing the title, they're doing a really good job of making you care about Kevin Owens. And at least make you believe he has a shot of winning uh, you know, next Sunday. And that's all I ask for. Give us stuff that we can get invested into. It doesn't matter how predictable the booking is. If you can give us a story that we can get invested into... Then you've already done half the job. All you have to do is then deliver on the match. That's what I'm saying. And there's been a lot of talk. A lot of talk about, you know, we have the Slammy Awards making a return. I talked about this a little bit on the Monday Night Raw podcast. But there has been a lot of rumors, uh, you know, not rumors, but, uh, you know, I believe that's plan the Slammies are going to be happening December 23rd. I believe it's the 22nd or the 23rd, uh, but it's going to be on the bump, most likely. Uh, it's going to be on all their social media platforms and the JDB network. And, uh, you know, they're not doing it on Raw or SmackDown, but still, 
uh, they released the categories, right? And I am, uh, you know, I am going to be doing a podcast sometime in the next couple of weeks where we're going to be talking about the WWE Best of 2020. And, you know, the Slammy Awards kind of makes it my job easier because I don't have to go researching, looking back at everything that Monday Night Raw and SmackDown did this year. Right. Uh, it kind of makes it easy because they already gave you, you know, the matches, the categories, the rivalries, the superstars, all that. So all we have to do is just go through and talk about them. Right. I'm not going to really give my predictions for the Slammy Award winners because the Slammys feel kind of scripted. But uh, so it's going to make it easier when we talk about what was the best of WWE 2020. And, you know, when you talk about the best of WWE 2020, you know, it has to be from SmackDown. It has to be from what Sasha Banks did earlier with Bayley, you know, and what she's doing right now and what Roman Reigns has done as Universal Champion ever since he came back at SummerSlam, right? And I, you know, uh, we'll talk about that more in depth when we get to that uh, extra podcast. I don't know when I'm going to release it either. Maybe this week, maybe next week. I got a lot of videos I got to get done. So uh, we'll see. I'll let you, I'll keep you guys updated on that. But, you know, still, uh, You see the success of SmackDown. The ratings of SmackDown are actually going up a little bit every single week. They're not going up by much, but, you know, they're going up. One week, it's 2.0. Then it's going up to a 2.08, 2.1, 2.2. And that's because of the work of Sasha and Carmella. Not Carmella. Sasha and Roman. I don't know what the overnight rating is right now. It'll probably be out a little bit later this afternoon because I'm recording this in the morning. But still, I really do like what they're doing with Sasha and Roman. They, they are elevating SmackDown, and that's all I asked for. While Monday Night Raw, there's no direction, right? Your women's champion has been an afterthought. And, you know, as much as I like Drew McIntyre, he's not enough to raise Monday Night Raw to where it should be. But at least on SmackDown, it's not a terrible two hours, right? You have a lot of storylines that I'm actually invested into, and that's all I asked for. All I asked for is SmackDown back to where it was, you know, in 2016, you know, back when we had the early uh, brand split and you had, you know, uh, you only had like six people in the women's division. I think it was like Becky, Carmella, Naomi, Nikki Bella, Natalia and um, Alexa Bliss. Right. I think those were like the only six in the SmackDown women's division at the time and they made it work. And then, you know, you had all those really good storylines, like with Heath Slater and Rhino as a tag team. And uh, you had AJ Styles as WWE Champion feuding with John Cena and Dean Ambrose, right? With James Ellsworth in the background. And you had Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. That was that was prime SmackDown of this era. Are they getting back to that? I don't know if they're there yet, just because WWE is so inconsistent. But SmackDown right now is easily the best show on WWE TV. Easily. Right. And, you know, they're not perfect every single week, but, they, you know, uh, most weeks they're at least decent. And that's what I asked for. Raw, you can't get through three hours of that show. You can barely get through 30 minutes. At least SmackDown, you can watch. Right. But uh, that's my quick opening thoughts, man. Sasha and Roman continue to carry SmackDown. And that's the way it needs to go. be going to WrestleMania. Neither one of those should be losing their titles anytime soon. Sasha, in my opinion, should not be losing the SmackDown Women's Championship all the way to SummerSlam. Yes, SummerSlam of 2021. Roman, he'll most likely drop that title at WrestleMania. uh, And then we'll see what happens uh, from there. But really love the direction that SmackDown has right now. Like I said, it's far from a perfect show. There are some negatives, which we'll talk about tonight on the podcast. But still, for the most part, uh, I really do like what they're doing here. Really did. Uh, But SmackDown, it was a decent show. Thank you guys so very much once again for joining me on the the podcast. Uh... Really quickly, I want to talk about Keith Lee, right? I didn't make an extra video on this because I, I just thought I would save it for the SmackDown review. Uh, there was a report that Keith Lee and a bunch of other main roster stars were sent back to the Performance Center for extra training ordered by Vince McMahon. So Vince McMahon had one of his fits and uh, he decided to send a bunch of, you know, talent. We don't know most of this, those names right now, but it'll probably be more noticeable, you know, once we watch Raw and SmackDown and notice who's there and who's not, right? But uh, Dave Meltzer reported that Keith Lee was one of those names, and that gets me angry. It gets me angry because Keith Lee is, there's nothing wrong with Keith Lee's working ability. I find that absolutely, like, ridiculous, Keith Lee has a working problem? Are you serious? You, you, you have names like Lacey Evans, 
Tamina, right? Uh, Billy Kay. Yeah, and I can go on and on. Those names can't wrestle at all. They bring nothing to TV. When I see them on TV, they do nothing for me. They are the definition of catering. They suck. You have freaking Nia Jax. Nia, ja- Nia Jax. Right? That big, you know, I don't want to get into insults, but you, you guys know what I would say about her. But you have names like that sitting on the main roster. Hell, Nia Jax is holding a championship. And remember, she got she won that title from the best female wrestlers in the world in Sasha Banks and Bailey, who put Nia and Shayna over when they lost those titles. But they have done nothing, nothing with those titles in the last three or four months since they've held them. Absolutely nothing. They've done nothing to make the division or the people around them better. But Nia, someone like that, who is absolute garbage, who everyone complains about, how she injures people in the ring. She's injured Kyrie Sane, injured, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Mandy Rose, right? She's injured Bailey. She's injured Becky Lynch, broke her nose. The list goes on and on. The proof is all over the world. I don't have to, you know, give you guys an example. Just search up Nia Jax injuries. And okay, you'll see how many people she's injured. You'll see all the clips. But you're telling me someone like Nia Jax who can't wrestle for anything. She's terrible at what she does. And who injures people on a consistent basis. Right? You're telling me that she, you know, doesn't get sent back to the performance center. But Keith Lee does? Keith Lee, one of the most athletic big man superstars we've ever seen, if not the most athletic big man in the history of WWE. Somebody who's had classic after classic with guys like Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, Finn Balor, the Undisputed Era, right? Dominic Dijakovic. The list goes on and on and on. Just go on NXT, watch all his classics. And you're telling me someone like that gets sent back to the Performance Center? There is nothing wrong with Keith Lee's working ability. Absolutely nothing. But you send him back to the performance center because you believe he needs work on his in-ring game? Are you kidding me? Really? I don't I don't know if this means he's being sent back down to NXT, right? But this could just mean he's going to the performance center for a couple weeks. But still, he should not he doesn't need to be sent to the performance center. He's fine. You know what this tells me? This tells me that Vince McMahon has absolutely no care about NXT. No care. Because he sees somebody from NXT, right? He sees that, oh, they're a big man or they have a good look. And then that's it. He doesn't... You think you think Vince watches NXT on a weekly basis? You think he watches the NXT takeovers? Do you think he watches the work at Triple H and Shawn Michaels and all those other, you know, legends? All those other guys down in the Performance Center? All those work that every single one, every single... Everybody in NXT does. This is why Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano don't want to go to the main roster. Because they feel like they would not be used correctly. They know how out of touch Vince is. And how he doesn't understand anything. This just proves it. This just proves it. The fact that he's sending Keith Lee of all people. Former NXT champion. Former North American champion. Won all the singles men titles in NXT. And you're sending him back down to the performance center? That that tells you that Vince doesn't actually look at these superstars. That's why so many NXT talent gets caught up and they're not used. They don't matter on the main roster. It it, it really explains it. I don't need to go. I don't have to give you guys the list of all the NXT talent that has been misused on the main roster. Because there's very few that have actually, you know, been used correctly or have had, you know, a genuine amount of success. People like the Four Horsewomen and Kevin Owens, right? Names like that. But for the most part, 80 to 90% of the talent that gets caught up from NXT, you know, they look good for a couple months and then they fall into the background because Vince, you know, doesn't get high on them. Every single time an NXT superstar comes up, oh, Vince is high on them, right? Vince is high on them. And then slowly, as the months go by, their booking gets more and more bad. They start losing matches they shouldn't. And then they fall into catering and then they're not used. And then eventually they get released because WWE has no plans for them. Or more that Vince has no plans for them because he doesn't care. This is the problem. There's another problem, another example out of a million that shows how out of touch Vince is. I 
I don't understand what's, what's the big... People ask me all the time, what's the problem with WWE? There's not a problem with WWE. The problem is one person, and it's Vince. He surrounds himself with yes men that will do anything he wants. He, get, he has all the power to make all his decisions, but he doesn't understand that he's the one that's keeping WWE from succeeding. WWE should be succeeding more than they did in the Attitude Era with the talent that they have, but they don't. Because they refuse to get rid of the guy that is the problem. The guy who doesn't understand that this is not the Attitude Era anymore. This is not the 1990s or the early 2000s. It's 2020. And Vince, your, your great ideas that made you successful 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, they don't work in 2020. Your time is up. Take a step back. You want to run the, the, the business side of DDB? Fine. You're actually good at that. When it comes to the creative side and the superstar management, you are not in the right position. You're not. I'm sorry. I don't I, I, I don't understand, man. I really don't. It just shows you how much that Vince doesn't care about NXT. He doesn't. He doesn't pay attention to any of the work that Triple H does with those superstars. That's why when they come up, they get their, their names changed. They get their music changed, right? They have different gimmicks. Keith Lee comes up with that generic-ass theme song, wrestling in a singlet, not even doing the, 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 the Big Bang catastrophe anymore. All he does is the Spirit Bomb as his finisher. A pop-up power bomb that how many superstars on the main roster have as their finisher already? This is just another example. There is no reason for Keith Lee to be sent down. There was rumors last month of Vince being high on Keith Lee and eventually wanting to turn him heel. And eventually at WrestleMania, you know, rumors of him potentially facing Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania for the WWE title. I also read a rumor that, you know, they're considering maybe doing a triple threat with McIntyre versus Lesnar versus Keith Lee at Mania. Is that still the plan? Is Keith Lee even going to be back on Monday Night Raw? Will he even be in the Royal Rumble? I don't know. But at the end of the day, all that this shows is this is another prime example of how out of touch Vince truly is. And if you guys can't see that at this point, you're a lost cause and you're part of the problem. It's really that simple. He is out of touch. He needs to go. I don't know how many times I have to keep saying this. It's not like I want, I don't want to spend the first almost 20 minutes of the review complaining. But I have to, because it's, if I don't, who will? Like Goku says in Dragon Ball Z, if I don't, who will? It's disgusting. It, it really is. Keith Lee, of all people, of, out of everybody, you should send back to the Performance Center. You should be sending people like Nia Jax and Tamina, right? And Billy Kay, who absolutely don't know how to wrestle. They're staying on the main roster, right? They're still being used, even though everyone knows how awful they are. But you're sending back somebody like Keith Lee, somebody who everyone believes has the potential to be your next big star, your next top babyface, your next WWE champion. But they, no, Vince doesn't see that way. Oh, they need more in-ring training. Absolutely disgusting, man. And like, for, if you're if you're defending this move in any way, please delete. Do not watch the podcast. I don't want you on the channel. I don't even want to waste my breath trying to educate you. Because you are just stuck in your own ways and you're you're just you're just as much out of touch as Vince is. You're part of the reason why Vince gets away with this kind of shit. Honestly. Terrible. Terrible. There is no reason, no reason for Vince to do what he did to Keith Lee. I don't know. I'll keep you guys updated on the Keith Lee situation. Like I said, I don't know if this is meaning he's getting sent back down to NXT. Or he's just going to be at the Performance Center for a couple weeks, and then he'll return. But still, I'm sorry. It, 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 it mind boggles me. All right? It mind boggles me, man. Huh. I hate it. Hate it. But let's get into SmackDown. Let's actually talk about something positive. So, uh, Sasha was actually advertised tonight for SmackDown. Hooray, right? You know, because most weeks, Sasha has not been advertised. And, you know... Even though I enjoyed what they did with SmackDown tonight, this show had this show had a Vince McMahon rewrite written all over it. And even though, like I said, it was a good show, you can tell. I can legit tell when this show is rewritten. 
I don't know. We'll see if it's reported in the news this weekend. But that's what it felt. Us getting a... Uh, us getting a Sasha Banks versus Carmella title match that should be at TLC. I don't know why WWE keeps doing this. They do this all the time. They decide to give you matches that they plan to put on pay-per-view earlier than the pay-per-view. Like they, they'll say, "Oh, we're doing the match early," or "We're doing a," uh, or "We're doing a uh, no title preview," right? Like the whole point of pay-per-view is they want you to pay. For the pay-per-view. They want you to pay to watch the show because they believe the matches and the events that you're going to be able to watch on the show are worth uh, are worth the money you're spending. Right now, we're in the age of streaming services, right? You can pay $10 a month, you know, for WWE Network. But back in the day, right, when I had to beg my mom, you know, when I was younger, to, you know, buy the WWE pay-per-views, they were worth it. Because, you know, you would have those champions and matches that, you know, uh, if you saw on Raw or SmackDown would be absolutely special. But they're too special that they have to be on pay-per-view. And most of the time, they delivered. But now, WWE is another example of Vince being out of touch. They didn't have anything for Sasha and Carmelo tonight, really. You know, they, they, should have the, they should have just done the contract signing. But instead, they turned it into a main event. And even though I like what they did, it just shows that they had no other plans. No other plans. So we had uh, a contract signed between Sasha and Carmella to start the show. I'm going to play the audio here. And we're going to break this down like we did last week with the sit down interview. So basically, Sasha came out to start the show. She had another fire outfit on. Like, like I said, I just love how Sasha like never wears her merch to the ring. She is always just wearing these elaborate, you know, uh, outfits that shows that how great she is. You know, it goes perfectly with her legit boss character. Even though I'm so pissed that WWE has not released one, one new Sasha Banks merch item since she became champion. Like I'm still waiting for my Grand Slam Banks shirt or hoodie. Like, come on, what's the deal with that? But anyway, you know. Sasha was in the ring. Adam Pearce was there to moderate the contract signing, but Carmella was not there. All right. So let's 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 play the clip. <laughs> so Sasha opens up the uh, the uh, the binder that's supposed to have the contract, but the contract's not inside. And she also notices that Carmella's not there. She's like. What the hell is this? Like, I'm the champion around here. Why am I getting treated with this disrespect? So I, I, I like that a lot. Sasha keeps that badass attitude even though she's a baby face and I love it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, if you guys just saw my startled reaction, I looked outside and a ton of snow just fell from my roof onto my patio. I'm going to have to clean that up later, but damn. That's funny. I make the rules, and you follow them. Don't worry, though. I did sign the contract, and I will have it hand-delivered to you by my sommelier, who also doubles as my little messenger boy and, well, whatever else I want. Will you take this to little Miss Party Pants over there and have her sign it? <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Carmella did a, you know, like I said, Carmella is pretty good on the mic. You know, she's decent on the mic. The, I remember when Carmella was smacked and was champion. The one thing, if you guys were watching the podcast back then, uh, the thing that was annoying about Carmella is she used to always scream all the time. But when she was serious, she was actually decent on the mic. See, her mic work in this feud with Sasha has been great. And Sasha just has been even better. But uh, it's just my problem is Carmella has not wrestled since she's been back. And they actually talked about that in the championship match, which we'll talk about, you know, near the end of the podcast. But that's my problem. We have not seen Carmella wrestle at all since she's been back. And she's just gifted a title match. It doesn't make sense. But I did like how they had, you know, Carmella being the heel, right? Sasha calls herself the legit boss. But here Carmella, you know, she's mocking Sasha, you know, by, you know, standing in the back, refusing, you know, to sign the contract, disrespecting the champ by, you know, taking the contract from her and signing it where Sasha can't touch her. 
So Carmella did a really good job here. Really good job. So she ends, she sends her, I'm just going to call her Aaron Boy. I'm not going to call it Small Ye like Carmella was uh, talking about. But she sends this little Aaron Boy, right? Uh, sends him to, you know, have Sasha sign the contract. You know, I should have known you've been up to your dirty little tricks. Aren't you embarrassed being you, Carmella? You should have, Sasha, but you didn't. I'm not embarrassed at all. I'm proud of who I am. That's why I don't pander to those little internet mouth breathers watching at home like you. Did you seriously think I was gonna get in the ring with you tonight? When you basically tried to maul me like a wild animal two weeks ago. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention also, like, uh, there was some audio problems tonight. I know this was WWE's first night at Tropicana Field. That's where they're going to be for the next couple months. Uh, we still don't know what they're they're planning for the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. If they're going to be able to have fans in attendance. I know things are kind of, I guess you can say, looking up. Because we do have a COVID vaccine at, on the way. But uh, still, we don't know if we'll be here in time for, you know, uh, governments to feel safe with having fans back at sporting events. Uh, but still, man. You know, uh, the, the the audio did, ha you, you could tell that they, they're, they're going to have to fix that because there was some very, very bad audio uh, tonight in the, and, it, you know, I, I, I understand, you know, baseball fields are not known to be, uh, to have WWE events like this, right? You, they're meant to be in arenas and sometimes football stadiums, but a baseball field, it's, it, that's different. That's different. But uh, the faster they get the audio cleared up, the better. This isn't Tiger King, honey. It's the Queen's Gambit. And I'm the hot chick playing the game of chess with your life. And I'm always four moves ahead. So that's the key here. Carmela said that she was four moves ahead of Sasha. That's the big key. Sasha calls herself the legit boss, right? She believes she's always ahead of her opponents. No matter how good she no matter how good the person she's facing, she believes she's just that much better. But Carmella here is trying to act like the boss in a way, right? Manipulating Sasha with everything she does, attacking her from behind three weeks in a row, you know? So from, you know, Carmella's perspective, she's doing a really good job of trying to make the fans dislike her and want to see Sasha just whoop her ass and get her to shut up. <laughs> yeah, four moves ahead. Yeah, games? Yeah, let's you play, games. play a game. Yeah. At TLC, play. we'll play a little game. How about this game? How far can I bend Carmella back and make her touch her spine? You like that game? How about this one? How fast can I make Carmella cry? Oh, I have a better game for you, Carmella. And you wonder How about why I'm one? not in the ring with you right now making threats like that. Adam, you better get her under control before she seriously hurts somebody. She is so jealous of me, it's getting to her head. But I know why she's acting like this. She knows as soon as she signs that contract, her days as the SmackDown Women's Champion are almost over. Yeah, sure. Sure. You know, so, so while Carmella's going on her rambling, right, Sasha brings up the iconic stamp. You know, so we know Sasha doesn't like using pens. She goes like, boom. Love it. Love seeing the stamp. Flip the script, huh? How about if you want this title, come out here and I'll give it to you tonight. What do you say, Blondie? You don't make the rules around here. I am the boss for a reason. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it tonight. Okay. Now that sounds like a main event. So basically, Sasha says, no, I'm the boss. I'm not going to let you, you know, mess around with me like this. So she actually offers to put up her SmackDown Women's Championship tonight. And, you know, they did Corey, even though Corey was sucking off his girlfriend. We all know Corey and Carmella, they're dating in real life. But he kept going on and on about how Carmella manipulated Sasha. No, this is Sasha's character. She's the boss. She's not going to be told what to do. She does things her own way. I love how Sasha said, let's flip the script here. You know, so liked how they did that. And Sasha's so confident that she can beat someone like Carmella. She doesn't mind putting the title up tonight. Carmella versus Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship. That's huge. And it's tonight. And it is official. Oh, and Carmella, let me give you a little preview how wild tonight's going to get. Okay. Oh! So she slaps the little Aaron boy. Somebody. 
Sasha Banks is taking him out. Takes Sasha off her Banks heels. Go, sending a message to Carmella. And then does the backstabber. <laughs> Then she flips the uh, the, the contract signing table onto the Aaron boy. Love it. Love it. So this was actually a really good segment. You know, like I said, Carmella's doing great on the mic. She did show a lot of rusty, you know, ness in the ring. And it's one of the reasons why I said Carmella should have been built up as a contender before having her go right after Sasha. Because you could see that rustiness in the match tonight, even though Sasha was able to bring Carmella to a really good match. And that was only 10 minutes. But still, a really good contract signing. I did get a little bit nervous. Because I'm not going to lie, for a second, there was a small part of me that thought, why are they doing the match tonight? First of all, it should be on pay-per-view, because if we get the match at TLC, it's going to feel a little less special. But uh, the thoughts came in my head that, okay, they're probably doing this so they can set up a stipulation, right, for the match at uh, TLC. And also, uh, I did also get a little bit nervous. I was thinking, what if they have Carmelo win the title tonight, just to have Sasha win the title back at TLC? Like, I don't want to see that. You guys don't want to see that, right? So, uh, those are just the thoughts coming in my head. Luckily, they didn't go down that direction, so I'll give WWE props for not doing or making that huge mistake. Uh, but still, man, ooh, I, I just don't like how WWE's booking a match that's supposed to be on pay-per-view on WWE TV, you know, weeks before the pay-per-view. It makes the match at pay-per-view feel a little less special. Like, come on. You could have there's there was you could have done almost everything you did in the main event tonight, right? <laughs> Excuse me. You could have done what you did in the main event tonight with Sasha and Carmella without the match. You know? But it just reeks of a Vince McMahon rewrite. Even though it worked tonight, it's still, man, just because it worked doesn't mean I'm happy that they did it. They could have done something different. But uh We'll talk about Sasha Carmella, of course, a little bit more because they were in the main event, you know. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So for our first action of the night, we had Montez Ford versus Dolph Ziggler. So we know they've been doing this, you know, this feud, right, uh, with the Street Profits against Ziggler and Rude. And I don't have to go into complaining about the tag team division, right? You guys know the problems with the tag team division these days. And, uh... The match was anything bad, you right? We all know how good Dolph Ziggler is, and Montez Ford, he's no slouch himself. So, uh, basically, uh, we saw in the as we came back from commercial, we saw uh, Ford trying to make a comeback, uh, but then uh, Rude attacked Dawkins at ringside, and that distraction uh, led to Dolph hitting a super kick, getting the win for his team. So this is actually the second straight week, second straight week that the uh, the Street Profits have been defeated by a uh, Rude and Ziggler. Last week it was in uh excuse me. Last week it was in tag team action. This week it was in singles action. And it was announced, right? So you guys know one thing that DDB's been doing is they've been trying to limit the size of their pay-per-views, right? They don't want their pay-per-views being too long, especially for the uh for like a B-level pay-per-view like TLC. So, uh, some of the matches that they're planning to have on TLC, they're actually going to be doing this week on Raw and SmackDown. So, two matches for next week's SmackDown. Uh, as the Go Hope Show, it is going to be the Go, Go Hope Show for TLC. It does actually look like a bad uh, card. We're getting uh, Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode versus the Street Profits for the tag team titles. We're also going to get Bailey and Bianca Belair, which I'll talk about in just a sec. We'll see whatever happens between Sasha and Carmella stemming from the results of uh, their match on SmackDown and, you know, the final build towards Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, which has also had a really good build, if you ask me. So uh, in terms of the SmackDown tag team titles, like I said, I love the Street Profits. I just don't really care about Root and Ziggler. It's going to be a good match. It's just I don't care, really. It doesn't matter if it's a five-star classic. If I don't really care about who they're facing, why should I even watch the match, right? Like, come on. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens here with that match. Uh, I expect the Street Profits to retain. You know, I don't really see, like I said, I don't see the Street Profits losing those titles until 
uh, Jimmy joins his brother again, and then we get like the heel Usos against the Street Profits. Hopefully, we can get that going to the Royal Rumble. I, I would really love to see that match. Uh, but yeah, I don't see the Street Profits losing here. Uh, I just hate how, you know, the 50 50 booking. The Street Profits coming off their huge win against the New Day at Survivor Series, and now they've lost two straight weeks to Rude and Ziggler. Like I said, I don't like seeing my champions lose. They should not be losing unless it's in some kind of like tag team match where they're not the legal man or uh, they're about to drop the titles to the next champions. You know, uh, there's other ways to get us a Rude and Ziggler match versus the Street Profits. But whatever, this is WWE's classic formula. So the match should be good next week, but I do expect the Street Profits to retain. Also, we had uh, Bailey. So Bailey, uh, you know, I don't know what they're doing with Bailey, really. Uh, so like every single week now, they have like Bailey. She has something to say about Sasha. I know it's just Bailey's character, right? But she's not in the SmackDown Women's Championship picture, right? They've already decided to end things with Bailey and Sasha, at least for now. But every week, you know, they have Bailey talking crap about Sasha. You know, so she was backstage just getting, she wasn't even being interviewed. But uh, she just kept saying how she's, you know, she believes Carmella will become champion tonight uh, because she kept saying how Sasha's like the most overpaid, uh, selfish, you know, superstar in the locker room. And we all know Bailey doesn't mean that. It's just, you know, that's her character talking. Uh, but then uh, she uh, compared Sasha to Bianca Belair, saying Bianca is very similar to Sasha uh, in, with those uh, personality traits. So Bianca was walking behind her. And Bianca had an uh, awesome shirt. I forgot what it said, but it kind of has said uh, it was like you know, it was like a verse from the Bible, but she applied it to her character like uh, uh, like no one ought to defy that EST, something like that. I forget what the t-shirt actually said, but it looked really, really cool. I, I gotta give Bianca props for that, because I know she makes most of her uh, outfits and her gear, but Bianca confronted Bailey, and she basically said, oh, you, all I hear is you running your mouth each and every single week, right? So, uh, they were just, you know, trading insults with one another, and then uh, Bailey just walked away, right? So it was also announced, like I just said, Bianca versus Bailey, which will be taking place next week. And I'm actually very intrigued for that match. You guys know I've been talking about it. This was the logical path, right? Bianca is making her way slowly to Sasha. And Bailey, you know, now that she's no, no longer champion, it's time for her to start giving back to the division because she's looked so strong, you know, the last year. So... With Bailey here, right? Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes. Like I thought the match would be taking place at TLC, but it's not taking place at TLC because they're trying to, you know, they don't want the card to be too stacked, which I understand. So if we are gonna get this match next week, I just hope it gets time because we know on a pay per view there would be no commercials, right? It would be about probably about a ten to fifteen minute match. I think Bianca Bailey has the potential. I think this match has the potential to be the best thing on the card next week. I really do think that. This is a chance for Bianca to really showcase her skills. She hasn't had that match yet on the main roster where she's really been able to show why she was so great in NXT. She's had moments, right? She had some moments at Survivor Series, but then we messed it up with the whole Lana situation. She never really got that chance on Raw, you know? Uh, she's had moments, you know, in the Royal Rumble earlier this year, plus Survivor Series last year. But this is really a chance because if you want people who may not, who still may not know who Bianca is, right? And you really want to make people believe that Bianca can go up against Sasha at WrestleMania if that's where they're going and they're not doing Sasha versus Rhea Ripley, this is your chance. This is your chance, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Have Bianca Belair, you know, uh, absolutely like 10, 15 minutes, right? No, a little more than 15. You can go 15 to 20 if you want. You know, we know how good Bailey is and we know how good Bianca is. This is your chance to make Bianca into a star. She doesn't have to even win the match, in my opinion, because I think what they should do is have Bianca and Bailey have like a series of matches, like a best out of three or a best out of five, just going at it each and every single week. We don't get that much in WWE. So I think, you know, that would be different, you know, so hopefully we do get that, 
right? I'm really, I'm really hoping that they gave they give Bailey and Bianca time because this I like when you have multiple feuds going on in the division at once. You know, this reminds me of 2016 SmackDown when the women's division was really good, even though there was only about six or seven women in the division. This is your chance. This is a chance to make Bianca look like a star. She doesn't necessarily even have to win if you want to keep the feud going, right? I hope it's not just one match and that's it. I really think they can drag this on for a little bit, and I'm hoping that they do, all right? This is a chance to really make Bianca look like a star. Bailey's going to do everything she can to make Bianca look good coming out of this feud, and I'm all, I'm all here for it. So, uh, Bailey versus Bianca next week. I'm hyped. I don't even need Bianca to win because we know that Bianca will beat Bailey eventually. If she does win, it's, you know, no complaints here. But, like, like I said, I think Bailey needs to win just to keep the feud going. Bailey doesn't need the win, but she needs to win if you want the feud to keep going. Because if Bianca wins, it's really like, okay, that's it. What else? What other story can you tell? Right? You, you want to see Bianca get built up into a star here. So I, I am very intrigued, and hopefully they deliver with that match next week. Hopefully they give Bianca and Bailey the time they deserve and really, you know, uh, give us a show stealer, right? So that's the one thing uh, outside of Sasha and Carmella and, you know, Roman and KO. Those, that's what I'm looking forward to next week. Also, we had uh, Big E versus Sami Zayn. So Basically, uh, Zayn was ranting in the ring about how he doesn't have any merchandise. Zayn kept going on saying, uh, uh, basically he was saying, uh, you know, uh, how he doesn't care if he doesn't have a t-shirt because why would he want, you know, uh, to feed it to, you know, how Americans consume, right? And that is true. But, uh, he wanted that so people around the world could recognize him. Uh, could recognize him as the top, you know, as the the champion of the world, right? Because that's what he believes he is as the Intercontinental Champion. He's the champion of every single continent in the world. So I love how Sami Zayn's character is. So Big E made him a shirt backstage, right, working with Apollo, and it was just like a shirt with like a stick figure of a guy with a beard, and uh, basically uh, it just had Sami's name on it. So it was kind of funny, you know. Whoever drew that is, is a pretty good artist. But uh Either way, you know, Sami Zayn was upset, so Big E came out. Like I said, I think I said this last week, I love how Big E has music now, and he's back to, you know, doing the chalk thing. We still just need, pretty much all you really need to do is change up his attire. I don't have a problem with Big E in the comedic role, as long as he's, as he's not, like, <laughs> freaking gyrating like he did in the New Day. You know, Big E's a funny guy. He's naturally a funny guy. Uh, so, uh... I, I have no problems with that, you know, as long as he knows when to get serious, that, you know, he'll be fine, uh, but uh, we got the match, the match was, you know, pretty good, you know, it, it could have been a little bit better, but, uh, you know, I feel like this is just going to be a series of matches, this is just the start of this small feud, so, uh, basically, uh, near the end here, right, B uh, Biggie got momentum doing his normal uh, belly-to-belly suplexes, then, Zane hit him with a crossbody. Biggie rolled through. He hit an Uran. That's what it is. Yeah, a Uran. Then Zane started acting like his hand was hurt. So then uh, Zane slapped Biggie across the face, getting the big man all angry. Tried running away. Biggie, like, you know, of course, being the dumb baby face, chased him under the ring. All right. And then Zane was able to get back into the ring by winning by count out so this is Zayn Singh right he's strategic but I feel like they are overplaying the count out thing a little bit like if every couple you know now and then you want to have Zayn win you know be a, be a count out or something like that sure he's the champion right and it shows that he's smart and how you know it makes him a little more unique because you don't see people win matches like that these days but the problem is if you're doing it every single week, it's not going to feel fresh. It's not going to feel special. It's just going to feel lame. And it's also going to give people the belief that Zayn can't win a match clean by pinfall or submission. Because remember, he, he won the title by handcuffing uh, Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles, which was absolutely badass and was great. But ever since then, Duddy was relying way too much on Sami Zayn, you know, doing the same thing. Like he can't win a match with, you know, his normal moveset. 
He has to rely on using some kind of count out or getting, you know, or getting the other person to disqualify themselves, right? So I don't have a problem with it for now, but I feel like WWE is overplaying it a little bit. You know, will Biggie eventually win the IC title? I'm going to be honest, I don't think so. Because I think they're setting up Big E, right? We're only about four months away from Mania. Why would it make sense? It wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense to have Big E win the IC title when he's one of the favorites to win the Royal Rumble and go on to face Roman at WrestleMania. I, I don't want Big E, you know, hot potatoing a title with Sami Zayn or somebody else, right? I would, I would, if you want to continue with the Big E Zayn feud, fine, but I would have Zayn win, you know, especially because Big E, you know, there's a bigger plan for him going to the future. But the match wasn't bad, but uh, just, you know, t- you know, it's, it's the little things, the little details that I want you guys to uh, remember here. Uh, next up, we had Kevin Owens. So Kevin Owens came out, they uh, replayed the, yeah, they replayed. Uh, the incident from last week, and you know, I I, I still love the absolute badass Roman. You know, uh, after the match, how him and Jay were unloading chair shots on KO, and then Roman unloading chair shots on Jay to put him back in line. You know, make him remember why uh, he uh why he was the tribal chief. So so then basically we saw Uso right he confronted Roman backstage and he's like we good we good uh, you know it's like and it was like Roman almost kind of like didn't even care right they're really doing a good job of making you dislike Roman Reigns even though you know he's not out there like not every single heel not every single heel that the company has has to be oh has to come out and crap on the fans no that's not the only thing you need to do to be a bad guy. There's so many layers. And what they're doing with Roman right now is really, really impressive. You know, it's basically by the way he's handling Jay, you know, Jay Uso, you know, not really treating him like a brother, not treating him like family, treating him more like a slave in a way, if we're being honest. You know, just, you know, using him to further his reign as a champion and him being delusional, thinking that he's at the top of the food chain and what he does, you know, makes life better for everybody else. Him having these delusional fantasies. And I love it. I love what they're doing with Roman. So here, right, uh, when Jay confronted him, Roman's like, I'm good. You know, I'm doing great. You know, how, how's, how's you and the family? So, like, it's like Roman doesn't even, like, he, you know, he's already moved on from what happened last week. He's not, he's not going to apologize to Jay. He's not going to say anything. He's like, I just had to put your ass back in line, and that's that. Let's keep, let's move on. We got other things to do. So, really, man, <laughs> Roman's just coming up as a, there's a jackass here to Jay Uso. So, uh, Kevin Owens went into the ring, right? KO cut a really, really good promo, man. Some people forget how good KO is at cutting promos. But KO cut a really good promo with a table, a ladder, and chairs in the ring. And uh, basically, he, you know, he he was talking to Roman directly through the camera, right, as Roman was watching backstage. Like, they didn't even go live to in the ring. The whole time, the cameraman was on Roman as KO was, you know, giving the promo on the TV, which I, I love that. Love that. Because it was like they really wanted you to see Roman's reaction to everything KO said. KO kept saying, yo, I'm not scared of you, Roman. No matter what you do, you're not going to give me the fear of you, right? Uh, he talked about... How it was time for him to finally get back to the top of WWE and being, you know, universal champion, something he hasn't been in over, you know, almost four years, right? And how uh, he's not doing this for his family. He's a superstar for his family to provide for them. But when he comes out and, you know, he he fights, you know, when he becomes fight Owens fight, he's fighting for himself. He's fighting to advance his career because his family isn't on the road with him. His family is at home. Their benefits is, of course, you know, the money he makes is able to provide a life for them. And, you know, I love what K.O. was uh, doing uh, here with this promo. He talked about how, uh, you know, he described the table, the ladder, and the chair, and what he would do with each one. And how they, all three of them, would become his best friends at TLC to help him be able to defeat Roman and become a universal champion. So... Then, as you know, he was talking about the ladder. Uh, Uso attacked him from behind with a chair, and then right went right after uh, 
his knee. I think it was the right knee. You know, KO did a really good job of selling it too. So that's probably going to be a huge uh, point in the story going forward. How KO goes or proceeds against Roman having an injured knee thanks to Jay Uso. So, of course, Roman was smiling because Uso or, or Jay was making it easier for him by attacking uh, his knee. So, Owens but was able to continue fighting, and then he put Jay through a table with a uh, pop-up powerbomb. Reigns came out, but Heyman convinced him to do this on his time, not Owens. Don't let Owens think he's the new head of the table because he's the one manipulating you to come out and attack him. So, I, like, I, I really did like what they were doing here. So, but then we went to break, right? We I thought that was the end of Rome for KO, you know, through that. Because usually when the heel walks away and they choose not to go confront the guy in the ring, that's usually it, right? They're like, okay, we'll show you guys more uh, next week. But we come back from break and, you know, Owens is backstage looking uh, for Roman. He asks Caleb Braxton, you know, where's Roman at? But all we see is Reigns attack Owens from behind. And then he stares right into the camera. This was awesome. He stares right into the camera and he asks his KO's wife and kids to talk some sense in the into Kevin. He's like, kids, talk some sense into your daddy. Right? But because the reason why he's in the position he is is because I'm the tribal chief. I'm able to provide for all the WWE superstars and they should all be thanking me. You know? Uh, because since he's at the top, this is why the company is able to make all the money it does and so much. So I love how Roman was talking into the camera like he was talking right at Kale's wife and kids who were watching at home. I don't know if they were, but uh, still, man, love what Roman was doing here. They're making you really want to hate Roman, you know, because he comes off as a selfish prick who doesn't care about anybody's feelings. So, loved what they did here. Roman had a vicious attack on KO. KO did a great job selling it. And like I said, I said for months on this podcast, they should be using KO. They should be using KO, putting him back in the title scene. And this is what you get. Even though we know KO is not going to defeat Roman at TLC. Very small chance KO is going to win. But the story that they're telling, just him, you know, with the passion he's bringing with these promos, man, is incredible. And, you know, I cannot wait for the TLC match. You know, I, I cannot wait it. And I'm happy to see KO uh, finding success again. Like I said, once KO loses to Roman, I would send KO after Sami Zayn. That's what I would do. Usually I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of someone that's in a world title feud going after a mid-card uh, title right afterwards. But in this instance, I am because I've been saying it for months. I've been saying for months Ever since KO feud with Seth Rollins at Mania, I've been saying this should be the direction for KO. And I'm just happy that he's in a position succeeding because he's showing again why he's so great. Next up, we had the Ride Squad versus Billy K and Natalia, right? This match was set up uh, because of Talking Smack last week when Billy K interrupted the Ride Squad and was talking about her, you know, her headshots and her resume. So, uh, you know, the, the uh, Ride Squad challenged her to a tag team match next week if she was able to get a partner, right? Peyton Royce is not being used right now. Honestly, I would not mind if WWE sent Peyton, if they wanted to do a trade or something, if they wanted to send Peyton Royce back to SmackDown to realign with uh, Billy K. Like I said, uh, they weren't my favorite tag team. I wasn't big fans of them, but they worked. And you need tag team to, you know, you need tag teams right now. You really do. They should have never been broken up. Never. Especially since we know they have no plans for Peyton Royce. She's in a terrible tag team with Lacey Evans of all people. Like, I sh need I say more? Need I say more? But uh, Billy Kay was able to get, uh, what's her name? Natalia as her partner, right? The match didn't last very long. So uh, Natalia, you know, basically was able to hold it down for her team, dominate the baby faces for a while. But then Kay tagged herself in near the end. Uh, Liv Morgan came out of nowhere uh, and kicked her into Natalia and then hit a combo with Riot to get the win. I don't know what the, you know, their finisher was, but they were able to hit a double team combo to get the win. And afterwards, Natalia left Billy Kay because she was angry because, you know, she tagged uh, herself in when she was doing fine on her own. So nothing special here. Like I said, I just wish the Ride Squad were tag team champions. Like I said, I, I, I said it earlier. I do not know why. 
the Riot Squad are not tag team champions. Why are those belts still on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler? Like, come on. Like, I, like, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> this is dirty to be logical, man. Dirty to be logic. And like I said earlier, you have Billy Kay who, you know, you know, uh, Billy Kay, who can't wrestle at all, but yet she, you know, she's able to stay on the main roster while Keith Lee is down and, and it's being sent back down to the performance center. This company doesn't have its priorities together. I, I still, man, I still, man, don't get it. How Vince, Vince sends down Keith Lee, who every, nobody in NXT ever complained about Keith Lee's in-ring work. Nobody did. But, you know, he comes up to the main roster and Vince says, oh, Keith Lee needs more work in the ring. So, sends, so he sends him back down to the performance center. But then with Billy Kay, who is, you know, 10 times worse, not even 100 times worse than Keith Lee, right? Keith Lee could turn himself into a female tomorrow, right? And just still wrestle circles around Billy Kay. But yet Billy Kay, who can't even do an arm bar correctly, is on the main roster, is on SmackDown. But Vince won't send her down. It, it's, oh, man. Uh, I already rented on it earlier, but it's just, it makes no sense to me. No sense to me. Uh, but we had Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura versus Chad Gable and Otis, right? So, I don't know. I know that Gable and Otis have been friends for a long time off screen, but I don't really know what they're doing with this team on television. You know, uh, you know, we know that Chad Gable's trying to do this whole new Olympian, uh, this Olympian gimmick. I thought he was going to turn heel. I thought that was the plan. Right, but I don't know if he's a heel or it's just like a cocky baby face. I, I don't know, you know. And like I said, Otis has fallen so down, for, you know, for me. Like, he, he I, I don't really have to say it. You guys have seen Otis start off the year so great with the whole Mandy Rose storyline. Uh, heavy machinery was doing okay, and then he became money in the bank. And then everything just fell down for him once the draft happened. Rose got moved to Raw. Tucker is in catering now, right? And, you know, uh, Otis doesn't even have the money to break briefcase anymore. They lost it. He lost it to The Miz. I have no idea what what's happened to Otis. Really, none. I'm just going to guess Vince fell out of favor with him. It's that simple. It's that simple. But, uh, I don't know. They show, like, a montage of Otis... And uh, Otis and Gable training together. And then uh, then we had the match, right? And then, you know, the match was anything special. Like I said, I wish Cesaro and Nakamura were being used better because we know how good Cesaro and Nakamura is, but yet they're in a useless tag team match with Otis and Chad Gable, of all people, right? But... uh. But uh, basically, uh, Cesaro leveled Gable with a beautiful uppercut. The Otis tagged himself in, did his uh, little babyface comeback, right? He had control, and it looked like he was setting up for the worm, or not the worm, the caterpillar. But uh, the, uh, Gable demanded that uh, he be tagged in again. So basically, he tagged himself in, and then, you know, uh, got up on the top rope, Right, it looked like he went for a crossbody, but then he fell right into the arms of Cesaro. Cesaro swung him like forever. It was for a good thirty seconds, right? Uh, you could tell Cesaro was really dizzy afterwards. So then uh, he tagged uh, Nakamura in, and Nakamura did the Kinsasha for the victory. So then we go backstage, and then Gable is uh, telling Otis like, "All right, we learned something tonight." Right, Gable kept going saying, Otis, you don't tag, don't tag me in when you had the match won. You know, that's a life lesson. So I have no idea what they're doing here with Otis and Gable. I don't know if they're eventually gonna have Otis, you know, uh, get betrayed by Gable. I don't know if that's the case. I I don't know. <laughs> I I truly don't know what this company is doing. Or, you know, with Otis and Gable, man. Like they don't even really make sense to me as a tag team. I. 
don't know. I don't really care. I'll see where it goes. But uh, I don't know what what what's the point of all this. Like, I know WB says all the time they they don't really believe in baby faces and heel. But you know, I, I don't know what Gable is. I can't tell what he is at all. Hopefully, we get some direction here. But I don't know. It's us. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Anyway, we had Sasha Banks versus Carmella here, SmackDown Women's Championship, right? And uh, it was it was it was kind of obvious from the start that we weren't going to get a clean finish here. The match, you know, basically there was we thought the match was going to start around nine thirty. The match didn't really start till close to nine forty five because they kept talking about you know what they had planned for next week's show and whatever. So you could tell you know they, they only really had about ten minutes here to wrestle. The ten minutes was fine. Right. And it just showcases once again while Sasha is the best in the world. I don't have to, you know, tell you guys that already. But uh basically, so before the match even started, right? Uh Mel Carmella showed off her new entrance. So they have like a little like a white cloth, right? And you can see Carmella's shadow of her dancing. It's just the definition. I said this on Twitter. If to me it feels like the definition of a thirst trap. That's what Carmel's entrance feels like to me. It feels like a definition of a thirst trap. What are we doing here? What are we truly doing here with Carmella? You know, like, I hate characters like this. I hate characters like this. You know? And I keep hearing these rumors of Eva Marie. I don't see Carmella winning the title, but I definitely see her and Eva Marie becoming a tag team. They're, unless even Marie's gimmick has completely changed, she's, you know, if she's coming back with the same all red everything, I don't know how even Marie looks like these days, if she still has the red hair. But I, you know, if even Marie's coming back with a similar gimmick like she had when she was in WWE, you know, like four or five years ago, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. They're, these two look destined to be a tag team. I hate these when they go back to these divas characters. Like, I don't mind Carmella, but I just don't like the gimmick. It's a thirst trap, and it's not good. Because I don't want them going back, taking steps back to that divas era. I, I don't. But, you know, her, you know, her, that's her entrance. It's whatever, right? She was way better, in my opinion, when she had the fabulous gimmick. They locked up. Mella yanked Banks to the mat. You know, by her hair, and you know, uh, she was actually Carmella did a decent job of keeping uh, Sasha on defense. There was a little bit of ring rust, but it wasn't too bad. You know, uh, I feel like Carmella's still saving some stuff, right? And you know, since it looks like we're still gonna get this match at TLC with a stipulation, uh, you know, hopefully then Carmella can show us more of what she learned when she, you know, since she's been gone all all year. But uh, she didn't look bad here, but she did show some signs of ring rust. She did a good job of keeping Sasha on defense, but Sasha hit a knee uh, to Carmella's face to be able to take advantage once again. But Mella hit a face buster on the apron as the show went to break. So we come back from break. Carmella hit a cross body from the top rope for a two gown. Then she applied the code of silence. But Sasha, of course, being the best in the world, has accounted for everything, right? Sasha was able to counter the code of silence straight into the bank statement, man. I love when Sasha has those unique counters uh, into, into the bank statement. She's, she truly is the best at that. So then, as Sasha had, you know, come out in the, in the bank statement, all of a sudden, you know, uh, Mella's uh, messenger boy, the Aaron guy, right, uh, he pulled Sasha out of the ring, and he yanked Sasha. He didn't, like, you know, like, slowly drag her. He yanked Sasha into the ring. I thought Sasha was actually going to kill this guy for a sec. So then, this is when I knew the DQ was coming. So... Uh, basically, Sasha attacked the hedgeman, put him in the into the bank statement, right? Uh, and then afterwards, Carmella put took uh, Sasha off her, off him. But then Sasha was still pissed as hell, showing that badass, fiery babyface attitude that I love. And then she attacked Carmella to the point where she got herself disqualified, right? So of course, Sasha doesn't lose the title in that case, uh, because you can only lose the title by pinfall or submission, but. Uh, they Sasha Carmella kept brawling after the bell, and you know at ringside they had Carmella had champagne, you know, all ready to celebrate her victory. 
But Carmella super kicked Sasha out of the ring. And then she pushed her face into the ice bucket she was using for a share of pain. Then she grabbed a bottle, right? This was Sasha did an amazing job selling. Sasha, we know Sasha. She's like the queen of selling, you know, even though sometimes she oversells. But here she did a great job. She takes, Carmella takes the bottle and she absolutely bulldozes Sasha in the back shatters all over it if you see photos of it online you can see like the the back does i mean not the back uh the bottle just exploding into a million pieces and i'm just like damn sasha like damn well you know i can tell that had to hurt at least a little bit even though the way sasha sold it it looked great but you know i wouldn't be surprised if sasha got a couple marks on her back from um from the glass so then Carmella poured herself a glass of champagne and then she sprayed the announcers with a different bottle. I don't know what she was doing with the spraying, right? I don't know if she was supposed to spray the announcers or spray Sasha. Sasha did have a bunch of champagne on her uh, at ringside. And Sasha <laughs> did a great job of like, she pulled a Yamcha there. She was, she was just sitting there like, and, you know, doing a great job of uh, selling, you know, Carmella's attack. So like I said... They could have done this. The match wasn't bad, but I would have rather they saved the the uh, the match for pay per view, right? I don't like when WWE does this stuff. They could have done. They could have accomplished everything they did at the end of the show because they really did a good job of making you want to see Carmella get her ass beat by Sasha because Sasha's gonna want to get payback on Carmella for you know the champagne bottle and all that. Uh, but uh, you know. They could have done all they wanted to with the champagne bottle and the henchmen. They could have done all that without the match. Because now all this does is, you know, we're going to see probably next week, Sasha's going to try to get her hands on Carmella, but Carmella's not going to be anywhere to be found. So they'll probably, you know, put a stipulation for the match at TLC. I don't know, maybe a chairs match? I don't know what kind of match it's going to be. But it's going to have to be some kind of stipulation. All right. And uh, it's going to be set up for Sasha to get her payback at TLC. You know, I will be the end of the feud. I don't know because, you know, of course, this is WWE. But uh, still. Uh, still. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. They did a decent job here. You know, I just wish they had not done the whole thing with the match because they never needed to do the match here. They never did need to. But uh, either way, uh, it wasn't bad, you know, what they did with Sasha Carmelo, you know, Sasha being the best in the world, like I keep, I, I, I always have to remind you guys, uh, they did a decent job of making you invest in the feud, right? At first, when they had Carmelo attacking Sasha every single week, it was like, really, this is what we're doing? But uh, the last couple weeks, you know, they've actually done a decent job with the feud, you know. Uh, they had the Sasha attacking Carmella backstage a couple weeks ago, right? With the fake champagne in the boss ring, which was great. They had the really good sit sit down interview last week. Tonight they had the contract signing, and what they did at the main event was fine. I, you know, I'm invested into it, even though we, Sasha's not losing the title, right? Like I said, Sasha's not losing that title until around WrestleMania. You know, I would I wouldn't have Sasha lose the title at all. I would have her lose that title at SummerSlam. But uh, either way, this is a filler feud. But for a filler feud, you know, they're they're doing their best to make it fun, you know, and not make it you know just generic and boring, right? It's better than whatever they're doing with Oscar on Raw. Oscar has nobody to face. At least Sasha, you know, she has a rivalry going on. You know, with Oscar on Raw, she's just teaming with Lana. Like, come on, get get out of here with that garbage. But uh. You know, what they did with Sasha tonight, I don't have any problems with. It wasn't terrible at all. And I got to give Carmella her credit. Even though I wish they would have had Carmella, you know, actually win some matches before going to challenge Sasha. But, you know, either way, it is what it is. You know, uh, this is what we're getting. And it's not bad. It's not terrible. I don't see Carmella winning the title, but uh, she's doing a decent job, at least. You know, uh... You know, I would not be surprised once this Carmella thing is over if they have Carmella go after uh, Bianca Belair. Man, I could definitely see that happening. But either way, we'll just have to wait and see on that. But other than, than that, guys, you know, that's my thoughts on SmackDown tonight. Uh, SmackDown was a decent show. It wasn't, you know, super good or amazing, you know. Uh, the Sasha and Carmella stuff, they're doing a decent job of keeping or at least had given you some vested interest into that but 
Love what they're doing with Sasha. Love what they're doing with Roman and KO, right? Uh, Bianca versus Bailey next week. I am hyped for that. So they're not doing terrible. They're, at least I can watch SmackDown for two hours, you know, each week. Raw is, like I said, it's garbage, pure garbage. But uh, let me know in the comment section what you guys think of SmackDown tonight. Did you guys enjoy the show? You know, what was your favorite part? As always, guys, I love reading your, and, you know, I love reading and uh, responding to your comments in the comment section. Other than that, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so very much for joining me right here on the Legit Shoot Podcast. If you guys are new to the channel, hit a like on the uh, video so we can educate more people subscribe you guys are new to the channel by hitting the bell next to my name fitzmunk tv so you guys are notified every time i post a new video make sure to follow me on social media the links are in the description down below i'll see you guys later peace